Wednesday night again, and I'm happy to introduce our new our guest tonight, Peter Baldassarian from Armenian Education Foundation. Hello, Peter. Uh, Hi. Uh, just a couple of words uh, uh, for those of you who uh, don't know uh, Peter. Uh, he's uh, the current president of the Armenian Education Foundation. Uh, I met Peter a couple of weeks ago at uh, Patrick Sarkisian's home uh, from One Armenia. It was a pleasure to meet him, and uh, we got to talking. and uh, and, I, and I thought it would be a great idea for uh, him to present to our group uh, the the uh, our education foundation and the projects that uh, that they have. As a matter of fact, uh, after uh, meeting him, uh, he went to Armenia for, I believe. Uh, 10 days or a couple of weeks? Um, yeah, almost about nine, nine days, yeah, nine, 10 days, yeah. If you can fill us in on, on uh, the foundation, uh, your sure. and the projects, it's a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, uh, Lili Tanishan. Uh, it was great meeting you. And uh, I, I think what uh, all of us are doing is uh, kind of uh, committing ourselves uh, doubly, triply to the causes. And um, so I can give you kind of a, um, introduction to what the Armenian Educational Foundation uh, has done and what it, what we're trying to do right now. So the organization has been around since uh, for 70 years. We just celebrated our 70th year. Uh, and it was started in Los Angeles by Armenian Americans who were thinking about funding the uh, the schools here, the diaspora. Just at that time, we didn't have Armenian schools. We didn't have uh, them. So most of those people, most of the founders, they're all recognizable people. They're the people that started the Armenian schools in Los Angeles. So those guys got together at that time and they 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 pooled their money together and were able to kind of um, offer the, the school some support. Um, and they were also able to offer scholarships and different things throughout the years. Um, after the independence of Armenia, the focus for the AEF uh, was we still do some stuff over here. We run an oratorical contest, a speech contest. We run a couple of other scholarships, smaller scholarships. We realized that a lot of our work needs to shift towards Armenia and Artsakh. Um, and so in the you know, uh, 20 something years we've been doing that shift, we've built over or, or be built or re rebuilt um, 200 schools in Artsakh and Armenia. Um, sadly, we have uh, of the 60 schools, almost 59 schools that we had in Artsakh, we've uh, lost temporarily, let's say, 
uh, about uh, half of those 28 schools, 29 schools are, are now in, uh, not in our control and uh, not in Armenian control. Um, and uh, you know, that's very painful for me personally. My family had uh, uh, sponsored, uh, well, there's two schools that we, we lost, one that we still have. Uh, of those schools and and um, you know and two of them were one was a music school in Shushi the other one was a elementary school in uh, Karindok and uh, so you know um, when I saw you Nishan that was a, a weird time because you know you have the sadness of the loss but then you have a decision to make either you could say why why did I you know spend so much time and effort doing these things or you say you know what maybe we didn't do enough and so I'm, that's why I decided that week of Thanksgiving week, I, I flew to Armenia to kind of give an assessment to see what, A, what happened to the schools that we have. You know, we have, um, you know, some of them sustained damage, the ones that we still uh, have. So we have to rebuild those. And then what is a priority with respect to education in Armenia? So, you know, there's a lot of great people who have good ideas and uh, good intentions and um, a lot of them are centered around education. And so um, my goal today in talking to you guys and in, in talking to people and spreading the word is, uh, guys, as a, you know, this is not my organization. I happen to be on the, uh, on the board and, and I joined it myself. It was always around. They, you know, they've, they've done great things and, and our board is open and our membership is, you know, open to any Armenian to join. Let's, let's uh, join, let's merge our efforts, let's not create more organizations, let's not create more complexity. And uh, what we do need is we need, um, you know, we always need more donors and we always need more um, bodies, right? Because most of our work is done volunteer basis. So for instance, um, we have all the board members who go every year to Armenia, they pay their own way, they pay their own airfare, they pay for their own hotel or they have a house there or whatever. And so these people are offering the type of, um, I always say this, the kind of people we have on our board, if you had to pay them for their expertise, you'd have to be spending several hundred thousand dollars a year. Uh, you know, we have people who are volunteering their times as engineers and architects to rebuild these schools. If we had to hire that person, we'd have to spend, instead of uh, renovation costs for, we just did a school in um, Gyumri. We did two schools near Gyumri, um, uh, one in Artik, one in Gyumri. And, you know, the cost was about 200,000 for one, 250,000 for the other. But, you know, there's a lot of costs that we that, that, are, that are volunteer costs, time and effort by our uh, by our board to make sure that, that there's no, you know, there's no delays and stuff. So there, these projects get done. Uh, so um, my assessment, having been to Armenia and coming back, listen, there's a lot of, uh, the, the, everybody's an expert in something, you know, and everybody thinks that we have to wait for this and that. And my, my goal was, to not wait, because we really can't afford to wait. Um, you know, regardless of what happens with the political situation, um, there's a lot that could be done. And uh, you know, if we wait and sit and see who's coming in, who's going, I think we'll 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 disappoint the um, the people that are there. Um, so when I've I've come back, my my our, obviously we still have the we'll have to renovate the schools that got damaged. We're get I just got an assessment yesterday. I think we have about six schools. That have been that have taken uh, you know some damage. Uh, thankfully, none of them are completely destroyed. So we'll repair those schools in Artsakh. Uh, we'll go to our you know we'll fundraise for that. We'll do that. Um, we on beyond uh, renovating the schools, what we've done consistently over the years is we offer scholarships to Armenian students that live uh, mostly in villages, remote villages. We it's a it's a merit and a need based. So uh, if you can imagine a uh, student who lives, uh, let's say, you know, outside of Vanatsor, they want, they get into college, they get to get, to get into Armenian university and um, they can't go because they don't have the almost thousand dollars US a year for tuition, but that will prevent them from going to school. So they'll either stay on their farm or uh, even worse, they'll go to Russia to become, you know, to do something you know, a laborer or something. So these are smart kids. These are kids that did well in high school that are scoring well. So what we've done is we, we offer, we used to offer about 200 of those scholarships. So um, about three, four years ago, we made a pledge to double that. And thankfully now this year we have 650 students that we, that we sponsor. 
So that's about you know just under seven hundred thousand dollars of of um, annual annual uh, scholarships that we grant. Um, so we want to take that initiative and say, okay, we're doing that. We're going to continue doing that or a version of that. But who else needs immediate help? So after my week, we, a little over a week of being there, we realized that the people that are going to need the most assistance are going to be our uh, wounded heroes that came back. Um, you know, sadly, there's a lot of them. We don't know the exact number. I'm working on that right now, but it's in the thousands. So there's uh, you know several thousand people that are now injured uh, as a result of the war. Some, you know, lost. Um, you know, body parts, some of them are just, you know, hopefully they'll, they'll just have a broken arms or whatever they'll get out. So that's, you know, to me, we can't let these people down. You know, these guys are the ones, regardless of how the war went, um, you know, regardless of the fact that this was, you know, not a success for us, but these guys did their job, did their, did their duty for their country. So uh, we have an obligation to immediately tell these people that they are, uh, you know, important to us. That they're the, you know, mo most important Armenians uh, I can think of right now. Um, and and uh, we need to take care of these guys. So there will be people to helping them with uh, Hokekan, the the mental uh, PTSD. There will be organizations that will work on, you know, housing and things like that. Where the Armenian Educational Foundation is going to try to step in is we'd like to help them with their education. You know. Um, even if the Armenian government and there's some, you know, they'll give them, you know, some compensation, but that's not going to be enough for them to return back to normal society. So what we're thinking about doing is um, what are the, what's an educational um, initiative that can give these uh, students, uh, you know, these guys are kind of done with the war. How can these guys get a job that fits what their now new life looks like? Um, if you can imagine, say, you know, a lot of these kids were farmers before, right? That before they left too. And now they are, you know, um, they have a disability. So we don't want them to spend too much time thinking about their disability. We want them to think, okay, well, here's an opportunity for you to do this other job that you never thought about or had the opportunity to do that. Um, so it was a good opportunity to be there. And, and thankfully, you know, I don't want to be so naive to think that we can take somebody who is a, you know, raising, uh, you know, sheep or cattle and now make them a computer programmer because that's not necessarily going to happen. So what we're going to do at the AF is look at, you know, compartments. Uh, these students, you know what, they could take these uh, this uh, courses and become, um, you know, be employed at the several tech companies in Armenia. These students, they need some other kind of training. These students need English language skills. These are the types of things. And what, what another group that we're working with, we're working with the, the tech industry in Armenia. We have, um, I believe we have about 10,000 tech workers currently in Armenia. It's one of the most successful sectors in Armenia. So we'll partner up with those people. There are a lot of big companies there and we'll say, okay, we will provide the education. You guys become the, the, the sponsor for these kids. So whether it's a you know, partial donation to, to their education or um, giving them internship after. So they've already, we have spoken to a lot of them. That week was very, very busy. We spoke to all the big companies and we're trying to partner up with them so that we don't um, give these people false hope. You know, they have to, we have to give them the kind of education where they can go and become useful to Armenian society. Um, and, you know, some of these, uh, you know, Armenia, I guess, and I, my mom to blame, we're all to blame a little bit. We were a little naive as to, we shouldn't have been, but we were a little naive as to who our neighbors were. Mm. Yes. Um, so I think we have a lot of people, smart people that are live in Armenia, some really smart people. And unfortunately, those people need to be empowered and we need to get, um, you know, these these people who actually fought know uh, better than us on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook what was missing from the from the war, and how could we have done better or how could we do better, the you know if we have to face these things. So through the education, I think we'll get these people. Not only will we not have again the number could be as high as five thousand people. I don't want to give a specific number. I don't have it. But uh, it's, you know, it's, it's a very high number. And again, some could be minor injuries. So I don't want to say that we have, 
you know, that many people that are amputees, but that's a significant number. And so, you know, our uh, ask to people watching now and things say, like, hey guys, this is a big undertaking. And, um, you know, it, it, it's gonna need, we're the, the amount of money we have to raise to do this right is in the millions and it's not gonna be, uh, you know, 50,000. And that's probably why, um, hold on, my microphone changed. Did it change the? Yes, yes. It, you're okay. It change. You're okay. Yeah. So um, that's really what we're trying to do is to get, um, you know, funds in place, which we've already have some funds and we've already allocated some funds towards this project, but it's going to take a lot more uh, assistance from people and partnership. And, um, you know, we discussed Nishan when, when we saw each other. What I don't, I saw a lot of um, something beautiful happen with um, when we were, uh, you know, during the war. Uh, you know, war is horrible, but I saw a lot of people who um, kind of woke up and realized that they need to participate. Um, and, and I'm sure you guys saw that. And I, I was really touched by that. And I told people in Armenia and Artsakh, hey, you guys don't realize what's going on over here. Everybody is really, really uh, invested in Armenia. So my thing right now is to people who are sad is say, okay, well, whatever happened, happened. Um, don't be disappointed that, you know, we don't have things or we lost things. Let's look at what did we, what could we do more? You know, where is the opportunity? What did we uh, not accomplish that had we done 10, 15 years uh, ago? Um, you know, we'd be in a better situation. So, um, yeah, that's kind of, that's the, the main goal right now is exactly. to help these kids. Exactly. If all of us, if we, like, we're here, we can't change anything. If we think, what can we do from now going forward in a positive way instead of, because if we think, if we are sad, we are stuck. We can't do anything. You know, it's like we're paralyzing ourselves in a way. So, yeah. The more, the, the faster we go out of this sadness and feel sorry for what happened, the faster we can move forward. And then we have five years. That's what, that's what we say. We have five years. Uh, yeah, I, I use that five years. And, yeah, you know, um, I, don't, I don't know what's a good motivator. I don't know if um, good news or bad news. So I'll give you guys both, right? So the good news is that, you know, we still have an Armenia. Right. Okay. And people have to remember that because uh, what I, you know, I went to Armenian school. I grew up here, but I grew into Armenian school. I've had this connection to Armenian arts. Uh, uh, and I, my grandfather was born in Shushi. Uh, and, and, you know, when my grandfather was born in Shushi, he had to leave, you know, they had to go to Baku and then ultimately to, to Iran. And I don't think he ever thought that his uh, son his grandson and his great grandchildren would one day visit Shushi and you know see a music performance there, but they did. So we have to, as Armenians, we have to say, okay, yeah, we lost a lot, but we still have, you know, uh, Armenia. We still have a land, and that's not what Assyrians can say. That's what not uh, Kurdish people can say right now. And there's you know many many other uh, ethnicities that don't have a you know place that they could call their own place. So. He, he, as you've mentioned, five years, right? We don't know. It could be start tomorrow. It could be up to but up to five years. Let's say that we have to get our kind of act together. And and I told people, I said, guys, I don't know. I mean, I don't want to tell you something that's not true. We have to seriously consider: Are we? Is this really our? Pro is this our land? Is this really our country? And we have to act like that. If it is, it is. But if it's if it's not then, you know, then don't, don't, let's not pretend, let's not, you know, and, and we could easily be having this conversation and, and about a sadder event of losing all. I mean, again, this is already awful enough, right? This is a painful, painful experience, um, but it, it, it could get worse, you know, or it could get better, you know, and, and I'm an optimist. I think we're going to do, use this opportunity to realize as diasporans, um, did we really do everything? Okay. And I, you know, I'm, I know, you know, many of us did a lot, but on, uh, what's interesting is the people that said to me that they didn't do enough this past two, three weeks, probably the ones, yeah, 
Yeah, and, and actually, yeah. We feel yeah, the same way. We feel like we didn't do enough. Yeah, <laughs> and, and I say to people, and surprisingly, the people that did say they didn't do the enough kind of were doing a lot already in terms of participation. But um, I think we should all have that kind of feeling a little bit and realize, okay, yeah, I went there and I looked and I was a really, really, was I giving 100% into this goal? And, uh, you know, that's, that's a hard, that's a very high bar. Yeah. It's a tough job. It's a, to be an Armenian, I think it could be very tough. If you want to take it seriously, you know, if you want that Armenian card, it's a serious, uh, you know, because I don't know, I think you can turn, if you could turn it off and just not care, maybe it could be easier. You could go, you know, on your vacation and not care. But I see a lot of people, I see a lot of people, uh, people's faces here in Glendale. It's like, you know, they're still in funeral mode. And uh, they feel really, really bad about what happened. So let's take that energy, that kind of that awful feeling, and uh, use that for good. Yeah, uh, Peter. Uh, from what you said, I mean, it resonates so much. I mean, uh, there's three points I, I right off the bat that I can talk about uh, that you just mentioned. One is. Uh, I had a friend, uh, you know, after a, after a test in, in, in college, things, you know, you, you don't know how you did. And, and you know, uh, she'd say, snap out of it. We have to snap out of it, you know. And, and for a lot of people, it took about, for me, it took about 24 hours. I was really depressed for 24 hours. I didn't know what, what was going to happen. And the next day is I can either say like this or I can snap out of it and, get to work and we need to get to work on a mass get, scale. Yeah, we're going to get it back. We're going to get everything uh, back. I, I believe because that's part of why um, I think it's very important is, you know, we can't, it's, if there's, there will be, listen, this is, if you, you don't even have to guess, right? In the, in a 3000 plus year of history of Armenia, you could just look at our map. It grows, it shrinks, it changes. So we have to be, think not like it's okay, this is a two year process. This is, this is thousands of years of this happens to us all the time, right? We lose land, we gain land, we call this, we call that, this guy goes. I, so I don't think short term, I'm thinking, you know, you know, this is decades worth of things that we have to do. But at the same time, you know, like we saw uh, the modern, the way the modern war is fought, you know, you need to be at alert all the time. And you need to get, you need to be, you need to have, you know, we need people to be working over there. We need money. We need, we don't have, na the only natural resource we have in Armenia is our people. You know, those are the only things we have there. And we have some really, really smart people in Hayastan. Uh, I met some incredible people. And I think sometimes, you know, uh, and I, we're all guilty of it. We're all kind of experts in something. You know, we all think that we're just kind of, oh, we could do things this way, that way. But, uh, you know, they need our assistance. They need they, They're very honest about it. And, you know, when you're in Armenia, they're not saying like, oh, we don't need you guys. We don't need they, they need it. But not necessarily. I think maybe, you know, charity will still continue, but we have to be smart with our ch charity. OK, it's not just, OK, you know, uh, AEF went and built. And that's what we have to look at. We're not just building, renovating a school. We'll still do that. But we're renovating a school and saying, okay, what kind of educational platform are we giving to these kids? Are they going to be able to get a job? And, you know, when we're talking about getting a job there, and I don't know, we, we put this in our video, and, and this is kind of what our research showed. For Armenians to make a good living there, we're talking about 1000 to potentially $5,000 a month, which is, would be probably the equivalent of making 40 to, you know, 100 plus thousand dollars here, Okay. For that to occur, which would be a good lifestyle for them, uh, you know, you need to look at jobs that that pay that well. And right now, the main industry is in the IT industry over there. That's why when we started shifting our focus, we said, okay, this is great. You want to go into, you know, uh, you know, Armenian history, or you want to go into dance or whatever. But we only have 650. Now we have 650 scholarships. We're gonna kind of give you more points if you're going into these kind of technical. Uh, fields because those fields are what's what can get you the type of job uh, in Armenia where you can stay. So if somebody makes one thousand to five thousand dollars a month, they're not going to leave. They're not going to go to Russia. They're not going to come here because they're going to have a much better life over there than if they come here and you know then have to go and start over and things. I um, uh, when I flew back on LAX, uh, you know I. I 
took a lift back and I'm sitting in the lift and the guy who's in my, who's my driver, he asked me where I was coming back. I'm coming back from Hayastan. He said, oh, great. He goes, oh, he's Gumretzi. Okay. He was a Gumretzi guy. And he was a, you know, he has a law degree in Hayastan and he was, you know, driving uh, over here. And he said, he said, I said, I asked him, we had to go into the conversation and he said, basically, yeah, if I was making a thousand dollars over there, no way I would come here. And I'd go back in a heartbeat. I have a house there. I have a, you know, my family there. So sometimes here we think that the, the, the problem is super, super complex in Armenia. And uh, no, you know, it's not, it's not that complex because uh, people, there's a lot of people that don't want to leave. There's a lot of people that are talking about going back even now. Um, I was there in October before the war started. And this is, no, I'm sorry. This is last October where there's a IT conference there. And, uh, you know, Yerevan was a very happening, amazing place. All of Armenia was bustling with people from around the world. And there's a lot of people that were wondering, okay, how can I make this, how can I make it work so that I can live here uh, and stay here? And, uh, you know, that's another project that's not necessarily AEF project, but that's another message I'm bringing back. You know, people need to repatriate, people need to go back, uh, not when they're retirement age. I mean, we have a lot of our uh, relatives and stuff that go like when they're, you know, 65 and that's great too. They spend a lot of money. Like my, my parents have, you know, bought places there and they, they go, but we need to consider what is it going to take to, to build up a country? You know, and and uh, it's not going to take. This is my assessment, but it's not going to take a million people. It's going to take a few thousand people to come in and say, you know what, this is maybe a different way you guys can do it. The people um, over there, again, they're really quick at adapting. There, we have a lot of intelligent people in Hayastan. We have a lot of smart people there. Um, they need a bit of a voice. They need to be a little bit of a nudge. Um, I was, yeah, I joke with them and I told them, I said, you know, everybody in US, the US is an expert, whether they're an expert or not, everybody's an expert, right? I mean, people here are telling you which kind of missiles should be fired from which region and what thing and <clears throat> which, uh, you know, uh, you know, like landscape. And, you know, some of these people have never even been to Artsakh or Armenia and they're giving you specific, you know, plans for Armenia. Uh, and, you know, that's good, but imagine if we can infuse in some of that kind of attitude into the, the, the people that are there and give them a little bit of a push, you know, and through education and through, through just uh, interaction. And, you know, then, then the, what is possible over there, you know, in terms of their economy, in terms of their political situation, in terms of their, uh, you know, protection, it's very possible, you know, I mean, if we look at other countries, uh, again, I don't, it's hard when you mention a country like Israel, because you, you know, it's, there's differences and there's similarities in some things, but, you know, it is very, very possible. Pick any country, pick uh, South Korea, pick Vietnam, pick any of these countries that have kind of improved themselves in a very relatively short amount of time. So what we're asking to do with, through the educational system is not an impro not a um, impossible task. Very, very uh, reasonable. Again, from the, from the most simple thing is if somebody wants to sponsor a scholarship, hey, I'll tell you how it works. You, you, you go to aefweb.org or you send us an email and you say, hey, I want to sponsor a kid, you know, a student, regular student. Okay, I'm gonna, you're, you're off, you're contributing a thousand dollar tax deductible donation and that person gets sponsored. So that's the easiest way. Next step is, hey, you know, you're building this school, you know, my, my grandfather, father passed away, I want to make it in their honor. And so you contribute some portion there and we kind of uh, will we'll pool our resources and that's, that gets built there. This last thing, this the newest project that we're talking about is, you know, essentially it's a combination, right? Some of it's going to be a facility, some of it's just going to be an educational program. So these types of opportunities are things that can you know, in a very short amount of time, imagine if we can take these several thousand injured soldiers and put them into the IT workforce or put them into uh, something, uh, you know, where they, where they feel like, you know what, my life is not, um, I don't even want to say the word, you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. 
And there's some people that are thinking like that already. They are wondering who's going to, this is simple stuff that we all have to, this is, these kids are asking, and this is sad because they said, who's going to marry me? You know, you're a young 22 year old kid and you got, you know, burns or you're injured. Who's going to marry me? How am I going to take care of myself? Uh, how am I going to take care of my family? So we have to ask ourselves, are we comfortable as Armenians um, letting these kids think like this? Or we're going to step in very quickly. And that's why I went and say, no, don't even think about that. We got you covered. You know, here we'll, we're, we'll, we'll get you an education. We'll, we'll get you hooked up with a job. Um, don't feel, you know, bad about what happened. You're a hero. Uh, and, and, you know, we, we are going to partner up with... Um, uh, Armenian wounded heroes, uh, they're gonna, we're gonna be their kind of educational arm. We'll try to work with TUMO. We met with TUMO. We'll, there's COAF, which is another good organization. We're, we're also talking to them. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, there's a lot of good people that we're trying to kind of come together and say, how do we address this problem? How do we address this, this um, you know, uh, unfortunate situation, but potentially a, a possibility to do something great? Very good. Um, you want to uh, give us uh, just a, a brief um, uh, summary of the projects that you already uh, have in, in place and uh, what are the next steps for that? I know you talked about the, uh, the sure. and the scholarships. Are there any concrete, uh, concrete things that when you went uh, that you've, you've come back to work towards that? Uh, yeah, so so uh, the main thing is, again, the information is coming in right away, um, which is just last night, some of the, God, we had a, it's very hard to get around in Artsakh. I mean, even the, uh, when you speak to the government officials, they're worried about getting electricity on. So nobody, and it's really hard to go to some regions. You need a permission from the Russians or Russian escort. So it's, so we have an assessment, as I said, we have about six schools that will need uh, immediate repair. Um, you know, some or it's just minor damage. Some so, so there's we know we need some uh, that repair that will happen right away. Uh, some of the schools will. So what's happened there with the villages is there are certain villages that uh, you know some villages are now not in Armenian control, but there are some villages that are get a few more. You know, they're going to get extra students because there's going to be kids coming from let's say from Hadrut or they're going to move to another uh, Martuni or something like that. So they're going to need classrooms, refurbished uh, desks. Thankfully, we have space in some of these schools. There's like space. So it could be just adding desks and refurbishing another classroom that's not that used. Uh, so we'll be, so there'll be those concrete projects. Those will, I mean, we're going to have to do that and worry about raising the funds. We'll have, we'll, we'll are going to allocate. We can't wait till, you know, it's, it's, it's winter. It's, you know, we're, the AEF is going to commit. We've already committed to doing those things. So, um, you know, the, we're, we're already, um, getting estimates and things like that. So that project's gonna have to happen. Um, we have the scholarship you know, situation, which is still ongoing. Before the pandemic, I mean, before the war, for the pandemic, we had supplied about 350 um, laptop computers to our students. Uh, they are our students because you know, some of them don't have proper devices to do the distance learning. So we've already sent those, the computers are already there. Um, there's some discussion as to like kind of, you know, that we're going to have to do another round of this because we're, you know, some of these people that were going to remote learn. So, you know, those computers are about, I think the price was somewhere on, under $600 or so. So there's the opportunity to sponsor those computers for these people that, that we do that. Um, there are still schools. There's a, another village school that we're, that um, uh, one of our actually interesting story, we had a scholarship student from the U.S., who went to, I believe, UC Santa Barbara. Um, and she's young and she's there. She's devoted her life to Armenia and Artsakh area. And uh, she wrote to us and um, she was trying to re renovate this one school that we're looking at right now. So there's that opportunity there. You know, we have to raise funds for that, for that school and we'll most likely um, lean towards doing that one. So, you know, and then this undertaking, which is the, uh, w which is what we're trying to do. And, um, you know, I think the, again, I wanted to come on now, but we'll know specifically what kind of programs, if for instance, if we're going to have a thousand of these kids go into a, um, uh, it's, like a it's like a self-learning program. It's called School 42. 
It's in uh, Tumo has using it right now on their fifth floor there. It's a beautiful program. Um, French billionaire came up with it. Uh, Tumo has kind of brought it and translated it to Armenia. But if they're gonna do that, we're gonna, let's say, partner up with them and, and provide that to some of these students. After the 18 months, two years, the person who graduates from that self-study is now capable of being employed. Um, so there's that. There's another amazing um, person over there that I met who runs a school, school called the Real School, uh, Irak on the Brots. And this guy, he's, uh, his name is Vahak and Bohosyan, and you know, it was an incredible guy to meet. He fought the full 45 days. He was you know, on the lines himself. Uh, he's a PhD uh, in computer science who was uh, working in Silicon Valley, moved back, to, he's Hayastan Si, who moved back to Hayastan. And he is, uh, you know, I can't, you know, this is the kind of person that doesn't need to do it. He's, you know, 43, 44 years old. He doesn't need to go and volunteer and fight. He's, you know, but, but he's not only is he a, you know, a, a brain, but he's also a warrior. So he started a school called Real School, which I really love. You know, it's a, it's a kind of a vocational high school up to the, they go in Armenia, they go to the 12th grade and then 13th grade is an extra year. And what I'd like to do is give a, ver when he's drafting a program for us to work with that and do a version of that for these kind of wounded heroes. So he's, uh, I mean, it's, it's hard to describe what it is. It's in, the one I visited was in uh, Yerevan and um, the kids not only learn, like they learn, uh, uh, basically they were essentially helping us during the war effort. Some I could take pictures of, some things I couldn't even take pictures of. And these are, you know, high school age students that are working side by side with technical people that are, uh, a, there's a company based in the same building that the school is. So the company people are working on, um, you know, uh, projects for uh, military reasons. And then there's these students working side by side. So again, this guy was already doing this program and here I am in the educational world in Armenia and I didn't know about it, right? So what I'm telling people is, you know, reach out, talk to us, reach out to the AEF and go, hey, I'm thinking about doing this, you know? And I'm not gonna, I promise you, we're not gonna take over your project. We can't because we need you to come too, you know? And I tell people, you know, you need money and you need people to work for it. Ideas, no offense to people with great ideas, but the ideas have to come with some kind of substance. You know, I have great ideas too, but I have to be able to be able to kind of fund it or uh, work towards that goal. So I say to everybody, if you have kind of ideas combined with one of those two things, either, either you want to help fund it or you want to go and do it, uh, you know, let us know. And maybe we already are doing something very similar to that. So if you want to buy laptops and ship over there, okay, well, maybe we'll waste, you won't have to waste two months and figure out that if you buy it from say, you know, Sam's Club here or Walmart and ship it there, it's going to get stuck in, you know, um, uh, Maxatun. Yeah, it's, it's going to happen. So I could help you not waste your time and, and, you know, pull your hairs out because you think your, you know, your computer didn't get there. So help us. Uh, I mean, we'll work with people like that. We need good people. We need um, um, good volunteers who are dedicated. And, uh, you know, the commitment also, it, the person who I was traveling with, uh, his name is Alice Sion, and he's, he's a, a great person who's involved with the tech industry over there. Um, and Nishan, you know Al also, you, you met him. He was saying, you know, you got to make these commitments, either it's a five year or 10 year, 40 year, you know, in some instances. That's the kind of commitment you need. It's not just, hey guys, here, here's it now. If you don't have time for that commitment and you want to write a 10,000, 5,000, or even $1,000 a year check to these organizations that are doing, that's also a, a good thing. But when you are kind of try to, like, you have these kind of um, mm -hmm. ideas to help there's a little bit of a commitment that goes with that, that, uh, you know, we can, we can help with that. You know, we'll, we'll steer you in the right direction. Whether if it's, if it's specifically about education and an Armenian. So uh, there, there are a lot of captains. We need some soldiers, right? I, absolutely. Absolutely. And uh, you know, and, and the soldiers are very, very, and again, the way our organization works are the captains are also the soldiers too. So uh you know that's we're the most, ideal yes, that's the ideal the most important yeah yeah so we you know we always say like okay that's a great idea you please go ahead and execute you know 
it, there's not like a central committee that gets everything magically or it's like orders things down. And if it's like, if we're going to do, you know, send, you know, we've done, we've also done, we've done other lots of other things too. We send backpacks to village skill kids, right? But guess what? Um, say for instance, if my wife is uh, the volunteer for that committee, she's going to be, you know, you know, taking it from A to B, you know, A to Z, uh, making sure the project, the big things gets there, it gets delivered to the right place. So we have those kind of a lot of these kind of projects where the committee members are, are really doing it. The board is just there for oversight. So, um, and I want to talk a little bit about, I heard a lot about transparency uh, and myself, I mean, my family, we've been donate, donating to Armenia Fund for many, many years. And, you know, I, that's for, for me, I'm not saying taking anything away from them, but there are people right now that are saying, hey, I want a different level of transparency. Or I want diff, if I want to, I want to be very specific with my dollars, right? These are my hard earned dollars. Uh, again, I, I don't mean to say that thousand dollars, the minimum donation, it could be $50 or whatever. It'll all go to the same thing. But what we have done at the AEF is we've been very, very transparent. You know, I mean, as transparent as kind of saying, okay, this $1,000 goes to this kid, Sevak. Sevak is the one in, you know, in this village, he's going to your school, you'll get to know that. Um, and also, you know, we, we file our 990s, which is a tax form we give transparency there's no secrets in terms of our uh, overhead we have a very very uh, low overhead we have um one uh, um, office person here in los angeles and we also have um you know two and a half people in in armenia in our armenian office and then you know we have a lot of volunteers um one of the coolest things we did and i can't take credit for it but the, the people on our board who decided all of our students that get scholarships uh, agree to do volunteer work. Now they only agree to do volunteer work for the years that they're getting the scholarships. But what's turned out to be amazing is, and you know, we have over a thousand of these students now, they've, they're all still volunteering. Uh, during the war, uh, they were going to the airport and unloading um, cargo, you know, and we just sent them there and they were happy to do it. It's not that we're ordering them around, but, um, they learned what volunteerism is, which is fairly new concept Very, over there. Yes. Yeah. And they first were like, oh, you know, they were a little confused about, you know, why and what. But when they started doing it, they absolutely love it. And so it's been infectious in Armenia. We got them to volunteer during the war. We got them to volunteer during COVID. Um, you know, another top secret project that we, the AEF was doing during the, um, during the war, top secret because, well, it wasn't a good kept secret. A lot of people, uh, women and children were moved from um, Artsakh to Goris, Yerevan, you know, they all kind of were transported there, right? Women and children. And, we, and, we, and, and the, you know, the government didn't want to make that known, but, you know, it did happen. So what we were doing is we were quietly raising funds to uh, help these um, uh, through our volunteers. Our volunteers said, hey, we want to help these people. But, you know, it's not fair for them to go and spend their own money to go buy, you know, toothbrushes and, you know, of, of, and things. The government was taking care of food, but there's a lot of necessities that they needed. So we were able to raise about $40,000 quietly and to start that process, um, you know, through our volunteers. So we did that project because it was you know, not our regular project. We didn't think about it a year before, but it was an emergency basis. We did that. So we did that during the war. Um, and you know, that was, uh, you know, the little things like that, we try to step up and do it. And, um, you know, right now everything seems to be on a, on a, um, immediate basis. Um, I wanted to ask a question. I'm not sure if it's related or not, but, uh, today I was contacted by a psychologist who is in, uh, 30 kilometers from Yerevan. Her husband fought in the war and he has some PTSD. And so she is actually, quote unquote, treating him. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because that's what she does. She's a psychologist. But because of the fact that, you know, the children are not going to school, the husband is not working. So she said she needs to make some money. And if there was an opportunity to, uh, to do some work while she's at work via Zoom and, and stuff. And when you just mentioned about PTSD, I thought I'd just ask you, are there opportunities like that for, uh, for people in Armenia who are looking to help because that's what they do? Is that? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, I, I think yeah. I think what I mentioned. Yeah, so um, the the uh, again to to stay with my own kind of like like idea, or not my idea, but the idea is. So everybody, if I read, we have a lot of good charities that have been around a long time. They're organized. They're big. so that would most likely fall into the um, whoever's doing the health. Mm -hmm. um, there is a woman there who's, you know, I call her the VA. Or again, I think I mentioned Haikui Minasian. She's an amazing woman there. She's, I think, formerly a journalist and she's doing it. I don't know, again, I don't want to speak, I don't think Armenia has a formal official uh, Veterans Affairs, you know, situation there. I think they're trying to put that together. I don't know for a fact if that's uh, uh, going to happen, you know, ASAP, but there's a few medical organizations. One I mentioned is um, um, Armen Hagopchanyan is working on one, and there's a couple of Armenian Medical Society. Armenian American Medical Association is also working on one. So hopefully they'll come together and figure out who um, is doing that. There's another guy who is working with the Ministry of Health. He's a friend of mine, Sean Chukardemian. I don't know if you know him. He's, yeah. So these are, there are people out there. We're specifically trying to do, you know, that's going to be an important piece of it, but because there are people who are experts in that, we're going to let them do it. And then what we're what we'll try to do is coordinate with those people and say, okay, you give them the the medical assistance, right? There's also you know people are trying to get them uh, fitted for um, prosthetics. Uh, prosthetics, yeah. There's a lot of serious situation, but but we'll coordinate with those people because they say, oh, okay, you have to do prosthetics and yeah, whatever, right? So we'll try and create the situation where you kind of like, okay, this guy's going to go do his rehab. The school has to be done at 6 p.m. because the rehab is done nine to five, right? So we'll look for those opportunities. We don't have the details yet because everything's kind of brand new. So there are some good people. So I would say for that kind of stuff, I would say, yeah, there will be some good, um, uh, you know, medical associations. And again, the same thing with them. I'm trying to see if you know, I, I've donated to those organizations. There are a lot of good people. If they can also come together and form a sort of a, a super group type situation. Um, yeah, and, and, we'll, and once we get the data and we're gonna share it with those people. So right now um, we, do, we started doing weekly calls with people here in Armenia, um, with the people that I, I saw in Armenia. We're trying to keep the momentum going. And I, I, I ask that everybody, you know, just like I'm, you know, asking for, for us to stay on it, Let's keep the momentum going. The fact that you guys are still doing this, if this kind of stuff disappears, we're going to be kicking ourselves way worse. You know, I mean, people are saying, you know, after 2016, we should have been thing. I'm saying, you know, not after 1990s, we should have been realizing, yeah. you know. Yeah, I and mean, again, it's very easy to complain about uh, everything, you know, pick whatever your, your, your passion is. You know, why did we let, you know, businesses not develop or political situation go like this. Well, uh, there's a simple answer for that. We have to take an active role. Um, we do have some power. And, you know, as diasporans, we're in a, what I'm trying to tell the people is this. I don't blame, not that I blame people here or there, but it's a little bit more difficult. Let's be realistic about it, okay? If you're worried about, we're, we're in a kind of a good situation, right? We can come in, we can fly in. Hey, guys, do this, do that, do that, do that. But you know, the people over there, there's a reality, right, to their situation. When you're worried about your day-to-day, -day, you really kind of don't have opportunity to kind of think of the bigger scheme things. I'm not saying they get a pass, right? I give responsibility to people over there. I told them, I told people all over the place. I said, you know what, you're responsible too for this because you're asking me, how can I, you know, how can how can I help? And I'm going to tell you, you have to take the personal responsibility right? Whatever it is, whatever, what are you upset about? You're upset about the government or you're upset about the, the educational system. You're upset about um, anything, any pick a topic. You have to, you have a voice and you have to raise that. And then I think what we have to do as diasporans is we have to be their backing. You know, we got to stand up and say, you know what? We're louder than you. Remember when I said, like, when I was telling you guys, like, we we're all experts. Okay. Well, let's let's fly in, right? I mean, we have the expertise. Let's go. Hey, listen, you do this. We'll 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 help you uh, how to do that. And if if we can do this, I don't think it's going to take millions of us to do it. I mean, everybody talks about the eight million Armenians outside of Armenia. 
I don't really think you need, I mean, it would be amazing if we got 8 million people to put in, you know, hundred bucks a month and maybe we'd have fun, but it's going to take a few thousand people who are going to go, maybe you guys, have, I don't know how many, three, 4,000 people are going to watch this program. Just the people watching your uh, Facebook live are enough people to create the momentum that we need to change things. Um, so take an active role, say, this is a, I'm going to, you know, I don't need to watch Netflix at night. Uh, this is my, you know, I'm going to dedicate my four or five hours a day to do this goal. Uh, and, you know, and again, if you haven't been to Armenia in years or if you haven't been to Artsakh, that's another opportunity to go there and really experience. That's why, you know, I've been there four or five times in the last three, four years. And every time I go there, it's a little bit, again, unfortunately, some of us go on family trips and we have to go from place to place and we don't really get to experience what it means to be in Armenia and understand the situation. Even to the people who grew up there, I would say, if you left Armenia in 1998 and you haven't been back since then, it's a really hard to understand what's going on there with the phone call with your relatives. Um, and so pick up and go there, you know, every dollar that we spend, and I, I really appreciate what you guys are doing with the Buy Armenian. I think it's extremely, extremely important, you know, uh, and you know what? We need to turn by Armenian into Armenia, right? Because there's the dirty little secret. There's a lot of people buying non-Armenian products in Armenia, you know, and there's like a lot of, you know, and they have to, we can't assume that they know that that's a priority. But when we go there, yeah, when I go to over there, I go to Armenia, I try to buy Armenian products made in Armenia, you know, and they have like really good shoes that they make over there. They have really good products over there. And I refuse to buy something that's that I can buy, you know, from here or if it comes from China or it comes from, you know, the the, the, the other neighboring countries. You, uh, you know, on, on a, you can do that on our on our uh, on our website. website. And, yeah, uh, definitely, our... definitely. Yeah, we see we see that a lot uh, advertised, and there's really a lot of quality quality work. Uh, we were talking with uh, oh, yeah. someone uh, last night who is a, a business owner in Armenia, and she said the quality a long time ago, it was good enough for Armenia, but it yes. wasn't good enough for the international market. But now it's different because of the internet, because of social media, because of you know technology. Now right. Armenian products can compete with the internet in the international market. And it can only Absolutely. get better. The more we support and buy more, the more it, it will get better. So yeah. That's yeah. 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 You, I, I would say, uh, and then, you know, I even, I tell people like, if they realize how much, you know, they don't need a lot. Like you, if you're exporting food, you know, drinks or whatever, if we start purchasing more here, just in Los Angeles community or the most of things, that's enough to create a business over there, sustain a far farmer. Um, you know, and again, we buy, we realize here in Los Angeles, we have a lot of buying power, you know, some, some of us are spending tens of thousands of the year, a year just on products, right? Things that are kind of throwaway. If we make that little effort, uh, and you're right. And you know what? Sometimes you can even make a request, you know, like I, I, when I go there, I say, hey, you know, this is great, but wouldn't it be better like this? And some, you know, because these manufacturers are kind of small, you can kind of, you know, get them, hey, I'm a, you know, if you do this for the American market, this would be, they like the feedback too. Sure. You know, they know they, they uh, yeah, I mean, one quick story, we had a friend uh, who owns uh, Opry's Wines. If you haven't tried Opry's Wine, it's a quality wine. Unfortunately, sadly, the the uh, uh, the a winery was um, taken over uh, mm -hmm. by, thing, and maybe you guys saw it on Facebook, because you know, they went there to take over the wine. They had, they had several thousand bottles of wine for this year. Um, but, you know, he, you know, he's a guy who, um, uh, Karen Bagdasarian, no relation to me. He reached out to us. He become friends. He went to Artsakh with the idea. He's a Baku refugee. So he left Baku. Uh, he ended up in the United States at Rhode Island. And so he had, when he had the first opportunity to go back after 2016, he went there and he created this winery there called Aubrey's. Amazing wine, you know. And, uh, you know, uh, he was here in our office last week. He flew in. And again, he's one of these people who should be extremely sad because he lost everything again. You know, you I mean he lost his thing, but he looks at it as an opportunity because he has a mission. He has to get his um, 
employees who are now dispersed all throughout Armenia, he's got to get them back to work. So, you know, even though he lost a lot of money, he lost in his own personal investment into this winery. Uh, he's got to keep these people employed. He's got to, there's a family there who um, uh, runs the, the winery and they're going to try to get the, the, the fruit from Artsakh and, and manufacture the, the, the wine in Armenia and then sell it. So they've been selling it here. If you can pick it up, Remedy Pharmacy, uh, Remedy uh, Liquors has it in, in Glendale. They're, I think they've now, the price of, might be about 20 something dollars, but 100% of the money is going to go back to, the, to supporting these people. So that's another good cause. So these are kinds of things we have to look at people who are doing these kinds of things and say, you know what, either I'm going to do it or I don't want to do it, but I, I'm going to go buy a case of wine because I'm supporting that guy. You know, I can, you know, I, again, I've been drinking his wine is not only, I'm happy to say his wine is really good. So I don't want to say like you have to drink bad wine, but it's an amazing wine. So why not help? Uh, you know, I'm, I'm sure the French winers and Napa winers will be fine if we stop drinking their wine for two, three years or five years. So there's a lot of that opportunity. And again, I want to say thank you for you guys bringing up. Um, this is a serious issue that we've sort of uh, neglected uh, for many years in terms of supporting, uh, you know, Armenians. And even here, and I'm sure, I don't know if you guys are doing, like even here, let's find out who are the businesses here Armenian businesses that are supporting um, these types of causes. Who's involved with this kind of stuff? You know, if, if we have choices, right? I mean, and uh, Peter, what we've done is on our website, uh, if, yeah. uh, if there are businesses that are owned by Armenians in the diaspora, yeah. we have a section in, in, the, uh, in their uh, store, virtual store, that says mm -hmm. what is the donation level that they are committing to. Mm -hmm. And if they have, if they're committing to an Armenian cause and organization, then uh, then we we list them. Of course, it's free. Uh, yeah. So if they if it's a business in Armenia, then they get listed automatically. Mm -hmm. There's no questions. Yeah. We want we want to help them. We want to support them. We want to improve. But for those Armenians who are in the diaspora, we said, okay, so what can we do in order to get them on board also. So we've, we've asked whoever is uh, making uh, donations to uh, Armenian organizations, we're gonna mm -hmm. for free and they're gonna be part of the uh, part of Buy Armenian. And so if someone goes to buyarmenian.com and they go to a store, the business, there's a section mm -hmm. that says, what's the donation level? The only thing we haven't done yet, which we'll, we'll do in the next few weeks during the, is we're going to follow up and say, okay, you've told yeah. us you're going to donate 20%, 10%, 5%, whatever. Yeah. Uh, have you done that? And if, and if not, then why don't we start doing it? And we're going to, uh, we're going to follow it up and, and report back to the members saying that here's a, here's a business that is in Glendale mm -hmm. and is, you supporting. know, supporting the uh, Armenia fund wounded soldiers, 1000 plus am whoever it is armenian education yeah. foundation okay and uh, they they're saying it and they're doing it and here's they they send us the a copy of their receipt wouldn't that be wonderful that that is you know spectacular and a lot of people had that idea and i'm glad you guys did it again you know a lot of people came up hey wouldn't it be great and we have to start from somewhere and we have to you know i'm sure you guys will continually improve it and make it better and come up with a better system but let's figure out who is it in our community, right? That's that, you know, we have a lot of um, smart people, you know, we have a lot of smart professionals. We have a lot of doctors, we have a dentists. We have a lot of people who are, you know, devoted to huh? lawyers, lawyers. Yeah. And yeah. And we have to, we, we need to say, okay, I have 10 people that I can pick. Right. And this guy's Armenian, this guy's Armenian, this guy's not Armenian. But who is it? The, who is it that's supporting Armenia and Armenia Fund? You know, and again, we have we do that. Um, my family is uh, we operate Pasis Kebab, and not only do our Armenian vendors we make them donate to Armenian causes. We have our you know paper products guy uh, donates to Armenian things, and these are these are non Armenians, but we insist. You know, we had we uh, used Karun Dairy for years because uh, Baron Antonik Bagadasarian, no relation to me was a big donor to Armenia Fund. So my, I remember when my dad switched from a, a previous dairy provider uh, to uh, Karun, it was specifically, that was, he was doing by Armenian before anyway. He was, he was doing it because his concept was, you know what, this guy's gonna give money. So it doesn't really matter what his price is or his product are. I mean, that's slightly important, but 
but the fact that he's helping the Armenian cause, these are the people that we need to help. And so if all of us take that initiative and find out, okay, well, this guy, he's a you know lawyer, or this guy does this, but this guy just made a $25,000 donation to um, this, this Armenian charity, or he's gonna build a school in uh, Gumri. I just talked to a, a cousin of mine who is a lawyer who's gonna uh, sponsor this one of the schools in Gumri today. He just gave me the check for it. And, you know, we should be su supporting these people. We should be saying, um, you know, that's great. You know, and these people, once they, once they let, and again, uh, to the people that are doing it, I would say, you know, it's not a bad idea to, to tell people that you're doing it because that could also spawn, that could also um, get other people to, to notice that other people are doing it. Now, again, there are some people that want to do, we have an anonymous donor that donates, uh, usually will kind of match whoever puts up, that's another opportunity. So if you're interested in doubling your donation, we have a, a anonymous donor that's that's willing to match most almost all the donations that we get. And that's been great uh, partnership. Uh, we'll do it again. Um, I mean, this guy, person is uh, capable of doing uh, um, over a million dollars of, of matching. So that's amazing thing that we have. And we're using that as also to leverage, you know, say for instance, you wanted to sponsor a renovation of a lab or a school and you only have 10,000, but it's project is 20,000. Well, the 10,000 will be, you know, satisfy this thing. So let's promote these people who are doing these things. Let's say, you know what? Thank you, Nishan. I'm going to come to you because you're the, you know, you're, you're dedicating this much of your income a year to this kind of things. And uh, if by doing so, we'll, we'll create this kind of network of people that are, that are dedicated uh, to doing to, do, to to doing the right thing, um, so I really think what you guys are doing is very important, and I think that we have a, all of us have a lot of work to do. You know, right. I'll take this opportunity to mention to the members if anyone is interested in in uh, contacting the Armenian Education Foundation, they can go to your website. Right? Yes, uh, you have yes. Uh, pro projects that they can uh, that they can contact you about. If they, Absolutely. Uh, if they are uh, looking for a, a project uh, that uh, they want to sponsor, they can uh, for sure contact you. Volunteering. Uh, yes. Volunteering. Uh, being, Absolutely. Uh, uh, Absolutely. And I can give you guys, uh, so we have an office in Glendale, a small office in Glendale. The website is aefweb.org, aefweb.org. Uh, we're also on Instagram. You guys can follow us on Instagram. You guys can see some of our projects. That's probably the best way to see some of the latest projects. We'll put up our YouTube video, which talks about the, again, it's very hard to talk about a 70 year organization in eight minutes, but we did it in a video. So we'll do that. We also have a you know old school phone number. If anybody wants to reach out and say, hey, reach back to me. Sometimes some people are not interested in the web or something like that. Uh, that phone number is 818-242-4154. 818-242-4154. And uh, yeah, please uh, go ahead and reach out to us. And uh, we, again, we can also, you don't even need to talk to us if you want to donate on our website. We have a, a set up there. We have a, um, again, we're a full-fledged 501C. So it's a charitable donation. You'll get a tax deductible receipt for your donation. And uh, you can decide, hey, you know what? I want to do a scholarship. No, I want to be part of the bigger like school renovation, or I want to donate specifically to this uh, Wounded Heroes Fund, which is the education for the Wounded Heroes. Um, and you know, that is going to be a big project. So we need your help. You know, we need your help, and and I'm asking, and I'm uh, saying that uh, you know you'll be, you'll see that we'll do some amazing things, and uh, we're not going to wait. You know, to because thanks to Zoom. And thanks to distance education, we realize we don't need to build a spend five years building a center. You know, a lot of these things we're going to try to deploy as soon as possible, and some of it's going to be remote. Um, some of it's going to be you know through a laptop because we don't want to think of the school in a traditional form where it's going to take some time. So a lot of these things we're talking about we should be up and running um, by the fall uh, at the latest in some concepts. Very good. Very good. Very good. Uh, thank you very much, Peter, for uh, yes. for spending your time and uh, and letting us know about your organization that has been around for a long time and does great work. Education, yeah. you know, is 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 a foundation of a of a lot of things. So, 
Uh, we appreciate your time. Thank you for coming uh, on the program on behalf of Lilith and I and all the members. Um, uh, I'll just put a, a quick plug in for a project that we're working on for New Year's Eve dinner. Uh, we are sure. providing uh, dinner for 300 families, about 1,500 people who are displaced from Artsakh in Yerevan. They're staying at the, in, in church halls, school cafeterias, uh, temporary housing. So we're going to uh, be providing dinner for them at $10 a person. That's what we were awesome. able to do. So we've, uh, we've put it on our, on our uh, page and uh, we're looking for uh, sponsors. And, um, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure we're going to be able to do that with the help of our members. Thank you again Thank for you. everything. And, and uh, we'll see you at, uh, I'm sure, at one of these, uh, one of these uh, projects. And we'll be working to, we'll be contacting you for sure. For sure. And Thank I you so much. Thank you. All our members to contact uh, you, whoever is interested in the education aspect. Uh, many different people have different different uh, things that they're interested in. For those who are interested in education, who want to contact Peter, please do so. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, guys. All right. Good night. Good night. Bye. Bye.